Good morning, mobsters. It's 8.20 in the morning. I went to bed at 3 a.m. last night, give or take, so I'm running on not a lot of energy. What I'm doing today is we have a contract meeting with the uh, city. So for those of you who don't know, and I don't know if this is this way for everywhere, but at least here we have what's called the FOP, the Fraternal Order of Police. It's basically our union. So I guess we're union workers in a way, not quite as hardcore as like the automotive industry and things like that, but we do every three years we get a new contract and somebody has to negotiate that stuff with the city and so the union takes care of that. I've never really been a big part of it and sad. I don't want to say sadly, but like I haven't really been a part of it because there hasn't been a need to be a part of it. We've had very good contracts. There was very little that had to be done. And that went on for when I got hired for probably my first six years or so that I was there, we had really good contracts. Then as most of you know, we hit that area in, uh, I think it was like 2010 ish, give or take that economy really tanked and there were cutbacks. So our contract, we, we got really lucky. There were no layoffs. There were no, nobody lost their job or anything like that. However, during that period, our raises got frozen. We have what's called steps. So like every couple of years you hit a different step, which is basically your raise. And then we also had the COLA, which is the cost of living expense. Basically in general life, cost of living goes up, you know, every couple of years. So you would get a, a small raise for that. And the two of those combined over the course of the year were your raises. So those got what's called frozen. So basically we didn't lose them. We still have the ability to get raises in the future when they decided to unfreeze them. Well, that's been years now. And it's gotten to the point where the economy's doing good again. Most every other agency in our area has that stuff back. And so it's time for our contract renegotiation. We're, we're coming up on the end of the, uh, the three years. So we start talking to the city and basically they've already had some of the first meetings that they've gathered up what it is that we would like to have to be you know brought up to basically the current standard that a lot of people have. And that's been pitched to the city already. So today's meeting is there counter proposal. So obviously just like anything in life, we shoot high, like we want this, we want the world, but they're going to come down somewhere lower. And then, you know, there's a back and forth today. The reason that I'm headed to this is it's important for us to basically show that we're interested. Uh, I was told a story a little while back that when there was another negotiation where a lot of people were complaining, there was a meeting like this. And apparently there were like two officers that showed up, but there were like six firefighters there. And the reason they were there is because they were in negotiations with the city and they wanted to see what we were getting to kind of use as a comparison. So it's really kind of sad when the people who aren't even working for our agency have more guys that show up that shows that level of interest to help better themselves and, and we don't. So they're making a push for this as well it should be. And hopefully we get something a little bit better than what we had. And I know somebody at some point is going to say, oh, it's not about the money and, and it's not. And nobody becomes a cop to get rich. Okay. I'm not saying that, but we all have families. We all have houses. We all have basic bills just like everybody else. So we just want to be able to pay our bills, pay our, you know, everything like that. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. So that's what this morning's about. We're going to go see what this meeting's like. Like I said, I've never been to one, so I will uh, update you guys as I can. Best part about this, the meetings at a fire station. All right, so that went well, it was interesting. I didn't understand all of it. In fact, nobody in there understood all of it. They've come up with a way to bring the steps back for the officers, but because we have a bunch of different people at different step ranges, to make it all even, it's this big deal. So they were actually gonna get hard copies of that so they could look at it and figure out how it plays out. So the main part though is they are very, very open and willing to work with us. And the basic numbers from what I could see the way they were explaining it is it seems like it's going to make everybody whole again. So it's definitely a huge step. It was good, good to be a part of. Now I'd recommend to anybody who, you know, follows this channel that's interested in law enforcement that as a newer officer, it would be very good to be a part of the union, the, the contract negotiations, the different things like that, because it's your livelihood you're talking about. And I was bad about it for a lot of years because, I mean, I hate to say it, just it didn't matter to me. I, I had a salary that was fine for what I needed and supported my lifestyle, and, and that was that. If I got a paycheck every two weeks, I was, I was happy with it. And it wasn't until recently where somebody ran a few figures for me and was like, yeah, you should be making, you know, $8,000 more a year than you are right now. Then all of a sudden it kind of hits you like, yeah, actually that, 
maybe I should have, you know, taken a stance earlier on. Now, in this case, it wouldn't have affected anything, but that's an example of why it's a good idea to be a part of it and just make sure you have an idea of what's going on with your career life and your livelihood. So while I was up here in Clearwater, I went by the uh, sign place, picked up some ink and some vinyl. I, I got to finish this banner I'm working on for a friend of mine. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw me work on it the other night. If you're not following me on Instagram, you got to follow me on there because I do a whole bunch more of in-between stuff of what's going on leading up to work and the next vlogs and funny things that I see at work or can talk about in between the full YouTube videos. So I don't know exactly what this is going to turn into yet. So by the time you're watching this, it may be a part of a vlog. This may be a whole vlog. I've actually had a lot of people saying they want to see me do some other stuff, like some of these products I'm working on at the house. I didn't really feel like it would be interesting to you guys. I know primarily you all are here for the law enforcement stuff. So I might do this as a little bit of a test, you know, work some other fun stuff in because I know this isn't exciting at all, but it's a little bit of law enforcement stuff to be aware of for the people who are getting into it. But maybe I'll try to make some of the other vlogs more entertaining. My home away from home. One of the sad parts about this is I know where everything is at this place and even some of the cashiers here know me. So it is the following day and as I went to make this banner, my printer decided that it was going to screw up on me so I had to get more parts for it. The whole day turned into this mess of doing that but now that's finally going and I got the prints done. For that banner these are the two that just came off but it's still all taken apart here i had to replace some of the parts in here to get the ink flowing again then i ran out of ink while i was going through that process and just the whole day got wasted doing that so that's how this stuff goes he looks comfortable you comfortable so i got it all stretched out here and like i always tell you guys and this correlates to the law enforcement stuff is about you know problem solving so I don't have a workspace anymore for like when I used to have a sign shop and I had tables that I could stretch the banners out, put screws in and pull it tight. So when I was putting the vinyl down, that it was good to go. What I did here improvising and I got lucky because of the kinds of baseboards that I put in here is like a rough raw cut wood. I was able to screw in the leads to the banner into the bottoms of the baseboard. So you never be able to see them, but I was able to like pull it tight here on the floor. I just got to get uh, ironing the wrinkles out those will come out. Now I actually have a surface and I can put this stuff on. So that's the next step. going on everybody so I'm sure by now you figured out it is yet another day in fact it's it's been many days since I actually finished that banner today I was putting together this video and working on it and I had taken clips here and there originally I wasn't even gonna do it and then I figured I'd see if I could put something together and a lot of videos I like to have at least some sort of a message for you so as I was going through the clips I guess the way my couple days went over the course of that project and, and the things that were going on and talking about the contract, I realized that there was an underlying message for the whole thing and, and it had to do with knowledge. It had to do with being informed, knowing how to do things, learning things, things of that nature. I've gotten a lot of comments on my Instagram posts when I update my story and the projects that I'm working on around the house and people are surprised that I know how to do as many things as I know how to do as far as the construction goes and then you know working on other projects and things like that. And to me, it doesn't seem that special. The way I look at things like that is if another person can do it, I can do it. And I want to learn how to do it. I don't think, I mean, of course you have certain things like brain surgery and an astronaut and stuff like you need some serious training, but a lot of the day-to-day -day things in life, especially when it comes to construction and a few basic mechanical type things, a lot of your everyday people do those jobs. My mentality is if he or she can learn how to do it, I can learn how to do it. And it's something I enjoy the challenge challenge of to try and see if I can do it for myself. And with that, two things come. One, I have more knowledge about things in life as far as my overall life experience goes, which has actually helped me at work as a law enforcement officer countless times. Calls that I go to where people try to pull the wool over my eyes or one over me that they think they're going to you know, talk about a contracting issue or construction or a tag and title type thing where they don't teach you that sort of stuff in the police academy. You don't learn about registrations and tags. You just know, hey, it's supposed to be current. But because of my 
life experiences of buying and selling cars and scooters and various things I've worked on, I've learned a lot of ins and outs of that. Same with the construction type stuff. So I've actually been on calls at work where people have tried to think they're gonna slide one past me and because of my background knowledge, I actually can call them out on their BS, so to speak, and it's actually helped me out. Now with that being said, I don't expect everybody to run out and try to learn everything in life. It's just something that I enjoy doing. So again, where not only does it pay off in the fact of general knowledge in life, it saves you money. I am very big on trying to do things myself and saving money, which allows me to have more money in my personal life to do other things, buy other things. I mentioned it a couple times in the vlogs about Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, all those places buying used stuff. I'd say 90% of the things that I own are all used. This camera that I'm talking on right now, used. My laptop for the editing, used. The chair was brand new, but it was off of Craigslist. You know, I saved almost $100. I think it was like $80 off of what it would have cost me to buy it from Amazon. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but the idea behind this is if you can learn how to do something, the better off you're gonna be. So that whole issue with the printer that I mentioned, I hadn't worked on that before. I don't have a real working knowledge of that stuff, but I figured, let me ask a few questions. Let me see what's involved with this because the print heads on that machine are $1,000 a piece if they were completely blocked and clogged up and had to be replaced. And I didn't know for sure that that's where I was. So I made a few phone calls. They gave me some suggestions and long story short, I was able to replace this little part right here, which is just part of the, the ink delivery system. It was about a $5 part. They gave me some basic instructions over the phone. I was able to pull the cover off on the machine, replace that, and that fixed the entire problem. So for $5, I was able to fix that printer, finish the banner that you saw in the video, and move on with my life. So again, if nothing else, I know this is a very random vlog, and I wanna have a little something that you can take from it and learn from it, because I know it wasn't very exciting, but it's things like this that if you could take the time and effort to learn a little bit about the stuff that you like to do, it's only gonna help you in life. It's gonna make things easier for you. So, and that brings us back full circle to the very beginning of this video about being involved, having knowledge of the contract and the negotiations and things like that because overall that affects my livelihood and my income, which supports me and my family and things like that. So there are multiple aspects of things in life that knowledge is power and it's very important for you to be involved in all of these things. So if nothing else, I hope you could take that message away from this video. For those of you who have stuck through this entire thing, I know it wasn't very exciting, but I really do appreciate your support. You guys are the true mobsters. You hang out, you watch everything I do, and I want you to know how much I appreciate that. I read all of the comments that you guys put in there, and I just think it's so super cool. I know a video like this isn't gonna get the kind of response that the patrol vlogs do, but my true followers, the ones that watch these and comment on them, I want you to know I love you guys very much. And I'll tell you what, I want you to comment. If you watch this to the very end right now, I want you to comment the word patch in with your comments. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a random comment out of this video and I'm going to mail you a patch. So there's the silver lining for watching this boring vlog. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you did take a little something away from this and enjoyed it. I will have more for you very soon. So until the next one, take good care of yourselves and we'll see you then.